God bless you. This is Pastor David C. Montgomery, and I'm here today on a quick teaching related to the unclean spirits that return into your life. Have you ever seen somebody who has gotten delivered, set free, and then they return back to what the word says, their vomit? They go back to what they used to do. Well, there is a consequence. So I have a word for you today that there's a consequence to you returning back to your old ways. We do not need to stay in a state where we return back to what used to be the old. It's called a familiar spirit or one that has what we call backslide. You ever heard somebody say backslide? Well, I return. Well, you backslid you back into what you used to do. But there's a, a consequence to that that we need to really tackle on today. And so in this quick teaching, I want to give you some understanding. Let's go to the Word of God in Luke, uh, Luke the 11th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 24, 25, and 26. The Word of God is really clear, and we want to give some understanding to what happens when you return, the return of the unclean spirit. Well, you return back to what you used to do before you uh, knew Jesus Christ. And so let's look at the Word of God here where it says in Luke chapter 11, verse 24, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. So that means that you have given your life to the Lord. There has been a deliverance. You accept Jesus Christ in uh, the manner of the mouth confession according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. You have now allowed the house to be cleaned out. And so that unclean spirit, the state that you were in at one period of time, has now left. So it says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. That means the spirit that was unclean leaves the body and then it begins to roam. It goes into dry places. The Greek word for dry means to be a place without water. Have you actually realized that when you do not have water, you are being dehydrated? You are being removed from what is really a percentage of who you are. We are a percentage water. What is water symbolic of? It's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. So when you allow the unclean spirit to leave out, that unclean spirit goes to a place where there's no water. There's no presence of God. It roams. It goes to what it calls a dry place. And so this dry place is a thing that will drive you almost mad. Now imagine the unclean spirit leaves out of you and then it starts to roam. Look what the word says. And seeks rest. So the unclean spirit is seeking rest, but it's going to places where you can't find rest. Have you ever seen somebody, let's just say the club, nightclub, street, drugs, alcohol, whatever, they go to a place and they seem restless. It's because the unclean spirit that's in you has a mannerism that causes you to try to seek rest, but you can't find it. Up at night, tormented. These are spirits that drive the individual. And so if the individual is being driven by a spirit that does not have rest, it can't have what? Peace. We know that Jesus is the prince of peace. And so without him, you have the opposite of peace. You have where you're seeking rest, but you can't find it. You're in distress. Wow, that is a word right there. You're in distress. So I'm roaming, I'm seeking, but I can't find rest, what? For my soul. Now, this is a demonic spirit that has been casted out of you. So when we look at this verse 24, it's so powerful to get the revelation that it says that the unclean spirit has gone out of the man. He walks through dry places. So it lets us know that the demonic spirit, the unclean spirit, is walking, roaming, seeking a place of rest. It can't rest until it founds a house. It needs a vessel. So it's seeking, but it's in a dry place. It's a place, watch this, that has no water. What does the body, if the body is a percentage of water, it needs to have a house that has water in it. Wow, that right there, that's deep. It needs to have water in it. So it's roaming and seeking for a place of rest. Look what the rest of the word says. And finding none. So the search of an unclean spirit is that they cannot find rest it does not have a place once it's been casted out of the body. So it has no place to rest. It has no place to make home because it has been evicted. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we evict the old demonic spirit that was in us. You know, we were half crazy, but now you're sane. You missed 
things in your life and now God granted you those things because there's a change. The change, men and women of God, is so powerful that when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you begin to shift from one dimension to another. So I go from crazy to peace without to having and now we have this period where we don't have rest, we have torment, but now I have peace. What? The peace to surpass all understanding. So we exchange God and the exchange from what we used to have when we were demonically oppressed. And so the demonic spirit, if it's wandering, looking for rest, why would you want distress or a place of a lack of peace in you. That's why we want to get delivered. That's why we want to give our life to Jesus Christ because now he is the Prince of Peace. He lives on the inside of us and then we now, watch this, can find rest. If you'll read Hebrews chapter 4, it's very powerful. It talks about how we have this rest yet that we have not obtained. What is that rest? That rest speaks to us understanding that in the sixth day we were, man, we were made. Man was made in the sixth day the man fell in Genesis chapter 3, and because sin got into who we are, into our being, we have a distress signal that was sent. And guess what? Thanks be unto God that Jesus Christ heard the signal, and then he came in the form of man, birthed into the earth, died, was buried, but rose again with all power and authority in his hands. So now the distress changed into peace. So why would you want a demonic spirit inside of you if the demonic spirit is still looking for a home? This is real powerful. Let's look at it and we'll go a step further. So the unclean spirit has gone out of the man. He walks through dry places seeking rest and finds none. He says, so watch this, the demonic spirit speaks. So every person that doesn't believe demonic spirit speaking, you read verse 24. The demonic spirit speaks after it finds no rest. So the demonic spirit is speaking, says, guess what? Today, many demonic spirits are speaking, and guess what? The problem is we got Christians that believe what the demonic spirit is saying, unsaved people believing what the demonic spirit is saying. So we got to identify when a demonic spirit is speaking compared to when God is speaking, compared to when we are speaking. There's three people speaking. There's God speaking, demonic spirit speaking, and then there's you speaking. And sometimes we're saying that, oh, God said, and really it's you, speaking out of your flesh. Or it's a demonic spirit that's speaking, and you have come into agreement with the demonic spirit of what he's saying, and now you think it's truth. Wow, we got to make sure who's speaking. That's a whole other subject we'll deal with. But here, the demonic spirit, he speaks. It says it at the end of verse 24. He says, I will return to my house whence I came from. Wait a minute. How is the demonic spirit spirit claiming your house and it's your body? Wow. It says it. The demonic spirit, it finds no rest. It finds no place to live. And it says, the demonic spirit says, I will return unto my house. So the demonic spirit claimed you. He claimed your house. I don't know about you. I'm in this thought pattern. Uh, if uh, it's mine, I'm not letting you say it's yours. But the demonic spirit claims you because if you're open, you allow the demonic spirit to come in and then he sets up residency. Do you know in certain states there is this law that it's called the squatter's rights? That you can sit in a person's house so long that the ownership shifts from the person who actually owns it compared to those who now are sitting in it. And because you're sitting in it, now you become the owner. And guess what? I believe that's happening in the spirit realm even now. There's so many people that you have allowed Satan to live in you so long, he owns you. So then if you get saved, here's the battle. If I get saved and that spirit is kicked out, that spirit roams and it says, well, guess what? Uh, I used to own that house. And so I need to say to those that are listening, if Satan has been with you more than God, you need to make sure that Satan doesn't come back to take ownership. You need to decree and declare, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. So if you don't serve the Lord, I'm not going to allow you to come back in and take ownership. Well, let's speak to that because it's even deeper than that. If you are a owner of a physical house, the head of a house, a mother, a father, and you have kids in your home, 
if your house is the house of God, you're saying, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Well, why are you letting them listen to rap music? It's not Christian. Why are you letting them do what they want to do? Matter of fact, why are you letting them shut the door like they own something? Because here's the reality. We say with our mouth, but our heart is far from God. If God says, as for me and my house, and this was Joshua who said it in the book of Joshua, he says, as for me and my house, I'm not going to serve other gods. So if, as for me and my house, I don't care if my kids are unsaved. You're going to abide underneath my rules, my regulations based off of the word of God, because here it is, until you can pay for your own and get your own house, as for me and my house. See, we have to lift a standard instead of letting the kids run the house. God wants a standard from those that are heads of households. Even if you don't have a man, you woman of God, you're the head of the house. Stand and say, hey, sorry, y'all. This is the way we're running this house. Who's the we? They'll say, well, you ain't got no man. You ain't No, the we is me and the one that I serve. See, just because you don't have a man don't mean that there's no male presence there because when God, i.e. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are all males. And guess what? They are helping you be the head over your house. And so as for me and my, we are going to serve the Lord. So you're never alone. You're always with the presence of God. You always have God with you at all times. And if God be for you, who can be against you? We need to raise a standard. The standard has to be raised because we got a lot of kids out here tricking off. We got a lot of kids acting a fool. But guess what? They had to learn it from somewhere. That's why the standard has to be in the home. The standard has to be those that they're looking towards that are the fathers or the mothers. And they need to stand up and say, really, today, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to allow a spirit to claim my house or my physical house. This spirit in verse 24 says, I want to return back to my house. How dare you, demonic spirit, think you're going to occupy my house? But look what the text says. He said, the demonic spirit that God cast it out, I will return unto my house, which I came out of. That is a bold spirit that says that I got kicked out, but guess what? Huh, that was a vacancy. Uh, I know it's a vacancy up and I'm going to take it back over. No, men and women of God, we need to be filled. When the spirit gets kicked out, you got to fill it with something. You cannot, in this hour, get saved, set God in there as the part of your house, but don't allow the Holy Spirit to fill your temple. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I know a lot of people are scared or don't know what that means. Well, you need to study because the word of God says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you shall receive power. Jesus said it to his disciples. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to be witnesses in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. If I need you to wait to receive the power, the word power is the Greek word dunamis, the word that we get for the root word dynamite. So if you're not explosive, guess what? The enemy is not scared of you because you don't have any explosion power. You have nothing to destroy him with, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, once I receive it, boy, I'm dangerous. And guess what? If a demonic spirit says, I want to come back and I'm just going to take territory, well, guess what? You're going to get a stick of dynamite. I'm going to blow you up. It's just that simple. So a spirit here says, I'm going to return unto my house, claiming ownership, because whence I came from, I was once there, I'm going to return. The danger as believers is when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we have to be really cognizant that we don't return to open up the doors from the past because the doors of the past will lead us back to what we call familiar spirits. They're familiar spirits because there's things that I've done repetitiously as an unbeliever that continuously has come out of my spirit. I keep doing this. I keep doing this. It's just like because I like that. Guess what? Many times with our flesh, our flesh speaks to this connotation. I like what I like to do, and I familiarity with it. I keep doing it. And when you keep doing something over and over, it becomes repetitive. So watch this. If the word religion is me doing a religious act continuously, you also can be religious as a devil. I can repetitively keep doing the same thing. I repetitively keep lying. 
I repetitively keep controlling. I competitively, repetitively keep manipulating because I am religious. We look at it as just in the house of God, but guess what? You can be an unbeliever and be religious. See, we never, we never come at the enemy the way he comes at us. You know, when you're at, 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 at uh, a situation in your life and somebody who's unsaved, they're watching you so deeply, waiting for you to mess up, waiting for you to fall so they can say, see, ooh, ooh, I thought you was religious. I thought you'd go to church. Well, here it is. You in the street tricking off and you religiously, like your crazy self, keep going to the club, keep smoking, keep drinking, keep lying. Keep manipulating. Keep stealing. You doing all. You keep murdering. How do you murder? Well, I ain't murdered nobody. Yeah, you did with your mouth. Death to life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. And so here it is. You lying, but you want to point out my faults and you live it where me I might accidentally fall into it. But the grace of God, the mercy of God says, get yourself back up. Repent. We here at Kingdom Word tell people all the time, repent early and often because here it is. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The power of God is that when I fall, I understand I can get back up with the help of Jesus Christ. When you're unsaved, you don't have no help. You just down. And some of us, when you're unsaved, many of you are in a place where you're so down, Satan leaves you there because he already got you. Ain't no need to attack you. It's no need. You already on his team. You got the jersey. You got the ticket. You got the seat. Because that's who you are. It's become a nature standpoint. But when you get delivered, and I decree and declare to whoever is listening to this today, saved or unsaved, I decree and declare your deliverance. You can actually go to church and still need deliverance. Ooh, wow. That's deep. Yeah, you can actually be in praise and worship and still need deliverance. You can be an usher, need deliverance. Let's get even deeper. You can even be the pastor of the church and still need deliverance, still need to get uh, some things cast it out of you. Why? Because it might be a spirit in you. Why are you even preaching? Ooh, wow. Are you serious, Pastor? Yes. It happens because the word of God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have to understand that the book of Romans is so powerful. It says that the wages of sin is death. You're living underneath death and God is saying, I don't care you go to church. I want to know a man by the heart. I want to know your heart. I want to know your spirit. Because if there's an unclean spirit in you, it has to be casted out. Or guess what? You live in with a demon. You ever heard of sleeping with the enemy? Many of us are sleeping with the enemy and don't even know the enemy is us. We allow that spirit, watch this, to come back in. That boldness of that demonic spirit that left says, guess what? I'm going to go back to my house. He telling you, you don't even own it. I'm going to come back in. And look what the text says in verse 25. And when he coming. So in other words, he coming. Let me give everybody a word. The demonic spirit that got casted out of you is not going to leave you alone. So if you have been dealing with a spirit that is wrapping around itself around drug addiction, guess what? And you've been delivered of drugs. Guess what? That spirit is coming back. It's Roman. It may be gone for a season, but guess what? It will come back. How do we know? Satan tested Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, in the wilderness. Jesus, son of the living God, 100% man, 100% God, destroyed the forces of darkness that Satan was trying to test him with the word of God. Whenever we start reading the word of God, isn't it amazing we fall asleep, we get tired, our eyelids get heavy, now all of a sudden we get distracted, the kids start acting crazy, your favorite Netflix show is on. It's amazing, all of these distractions, but Jesus defeated Satan in Matthew chapter 4 in such a powerful way because he had the word of God, because he is the word of God. So when you accept Jesus Christ, the word of God is in you, and you need to allow him to be released. He spoke the word. He said, it is written. Once he defeated Satan in the, uh, the temptation of oh, those 40 days in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, it says that Satan departed for a season. In other words, he was casted out. He wasn't in Jesus, but Jesus casted him from his presence. Now we, here in this text, the demonic spirit is in the man and gets casted out. When Jesus told Satan to go, he cast him away from him. It says that he left for a season. So in other words, he will go roam, 
but then he'll say, let me go back and test. So what does that speak to those that are believers and even the unbelievers? You may defeat Satan at one period, but it does not mean that is an eternal defeat. He's going to come back just like this spirit in verse 25. This says in verse 25, and when he cometh, he findeth it, what? The house swept and garnished. In other words, it was furnished. So the demonic spirit leaves, goes into the wilderness. It goes into a place where it's trying to find rest. It finds none. And then he, the demonic spirit speaks and says, I'm going to go back to my house where I got kicked out of. He goes back to that place and he finds that it is empty. It's furnished, but it's empty. In other words, nobody has taken occupancy. See, we need to find out who's taking occupancy in your house. Is it God or did you leave it vacant for that spirit to come back? Somebody's going to take ownership. I decree and declare today that you need to allow God, the son of the living God, Jesus himself. And then as Jesus ascended, he had the Holy Spirit descend to live in us. So in essence, we can have somebody owning the house. Have you ever had a good babysitter? We need you to babysit our house. If the babysitter is there to babysit the house, nobody should have authority to throw the babysitter out because the owner of the house has given the babysitter the authority to rule that house. We got to ask a question today. Do you have somebody being a babysitter at your house? Or is your house open for somebody to just take ownership? Again, squatter's rights. This demonic spirit in verse 25, it says, And when he comes, he findeth it swept and garnished. I went back to the house and I found that nobody was taking ownership. It was cleaned up because the cleaning, watch this, came from the eviction. Have you ever had to uh, move from an apartment and they said, For you to get your deposit back, you got to clean that room. You got to clean that apartment. You can't just leave it anywhere because if you leave it uh, unclean, then guess what? Your deposit you're not going to get. Many of us, men and women of God, when we uh, allow Jesus Christ to clean out our apartment, our house, he does not leave it where you won't get your deposit back. He makes sure it's clean. It's squeaky clean. Now, Satan will come back as he does in verse 25. He comes back and he finds that it's garnished. And it's been swept. In other words, it's been cleaned. Why? It got clean when that demonic spirit got out your life. When you got rid of the demonic spirit, guess what? God cleaned you up. And this is where we got to rejoice in the Lord. And always, again, I say rejoice. He cleaned me up. Guess what? I don't have that demonic spirit running in anything anymore. He's not there. But we need to understand this next verse because this next verse is the key to our deliverance to stay delivered. That's the word I want you to catch, stay delivered. Look at verse 26. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits. Wait a minute. The initial spirit that got kicked out, that unclean spirit, came, checked the house. He needed to see, has anybody moved in? He finds it swept. It's still clean because once a demonic spirit gets into you. Have you ever realized you become real dirty? Ooh, we that right there. When an unclean spirit is in you, you can't keep your house even clean. For all my hoarders, oh my God, help me, Holy Ghost. For all those that like to hoard and don't like to clean up. Old school used to say it like this. Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, here it is. If your house ain't clean, you can't put stuff up underneath the bed. You got to keep stuff clean because it's a representation of who you serve. I serve a God that's clean. He ain't letting stuff just linger. Oh, I'll come back and get that. Well, guess what? You better get to it. I decree and declare that somebody needs to clean their house. It's springtime. Somebody needs to go and clean out some stuff. You know you ain't wearing that old dress. You ain't wearing that old suit. It's time to clean some stuff out. Why? You can't. Expect God to bring new when old is in its place. That's a word. Somebody need to get rid of that man. <laughs> Somebody need to get rid of that girlfriend. Hold on. If you are seeking God for a mate, how can she be a girlfriend when you're looking for a wife? Uh-oh. Help me, Jesus. A man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So I ain't never been looking for a girlfriend. I've been looking for a mate, a wife. 
Guess what? Wives don't sit on every corner. Wives ain't at the club. Wives ain't drinking. Wives ain't smoking. Wives ain't talking about pass the weed to the left hands. No, they ain't doing all that. No, a wife, if you'll go back to Psalm, uh, Pro, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, start at verse 10, look at the characteristics of a virtuous woman, someone that can stand in a wife because she has, in those texts, you'll find that she has a husband that she's caring for. She has kids that she's caring for. So she ain't just somebody that got kids but ain't got no man. Ooh, Jesus, I know that's something else because we got to clean the house. So if you got the house clean, this demonic spirit comes back and sees that it's unclean and says, guess what? I don't want to be alone. You ever know that demonic spirits don't want to be alone? So watch this. Verse 26, the demonic spirit, look at it. It goes and he, the demonic spirit, taketh to him seven other spirits. So if demonic spirits don't want to be alone, why you don't invite the Holy Spirit into your life? Talking about, oh, I'm alone. So many people, it's amazing. I keep hearing how you're so alone, but you don't even let the Holy Spirit in. A demonic spirit goes and gets seven other spirits. Look what it says. More wicked than himself. When did the demonic spirit sit back and have a survey? I need to find out that you're worse than me. I got kicked out, but guess what? I need seven other spirits that have such a deeper demonic force on them. I need those to run with me. And look what it says. He taketh to him seven other spirits more work, wicked than himself. And they enter in. They, all eight of those spirits, the original spirit that got uh, kicked out in verse 24, and then seven other spirits that are more wickeder than the original. So now you got eight demonic spirits. Guess what? If I got eight demonic spirits and it only used to be one, it's more occupancy. So in other words, more demonic spirits can do more damage. What does Satan desire? In John chapter 10, verse 10, he says he desires to steal, kill, and destroy. If I've got eight spirits working to steal, kill, and destroy, and I used to only have one, it was better for you to stay with the one. I'm going to say something that's going to be very controversial, but here it is. It's better for you to stay with your one demon than try to fake as if you really want God. And God clean your house. And then he goes and gets seven more spirits worse than him. And they come back and now the eight spirits are in you. Eight spirits working demonically. They're going to make you worse than what you were with that one demonic spirit. In other words, the word of the Lord to you today is don't play with God. If you're not serious about the deliverance of God. And to stay delivered. It's best for you not to even open yourself up to the cleansing and the removal of an unclean spirit, a demonic spirit, out of your life because he'll go get seven worse than him. Look what the text says. And so he goes, takes to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. They set up residency. Didn't the initial spirit, the initial unclean spirit, didn't it say, I'm going to go back to my house which I came from. So in other words, I'm going to take ownership once again of the place that I once was at. And now we find that once it takes up residence with seven more spirits that's worse than he, that initial spirit, it says the last state of this man is worse than the first state. So how you are in the end is worse than how you were when you began. So you began with one spirit, but now you open yourself up, got cleaned by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, and did not fill the house. And so that spirit came back through temptation, through coming back to another season, when maybe you're not so focused in God, you're not praying, you're not fasting, you're not worshiping, you're not attending services to be able to be built by a pastor because a student is not greater than a teacher. You need a good teacher. You need somebody and let me stop with this aspect really quickly. We got to stop with all this mess out here in the world talking about we can't find no good pastor. If the Holy Spirit is hearing you and is in you, he will lead you and guide you into all truth according to the word of God in the book of John chapter 14. If the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth, if you end up in a bad church, maybe you led yourself. Checkmate. If you led yourself, 
you're wondering why you're in a bad state and then you get abused. Oh, I've been so church hurt. I'm so sick of this denomination that done got created. You know what you are? You're an excuser. What's, what's an excuser? You like using excuses to cover that you want to keep doing what you want to do in your flesh. We have, a, well, I don't want to attend church because they ain't no good pastors. I'm sending a word to you and I hope this busts you right between your grill. You need to understand you're lying. The Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you into all truth, the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you to a place where you're going to get damaged. Period. I'm going to say it like this. You sent yourself. Some of you, you sent yourself because you want to get a title. You want to get a position. You want to be seen. You want to be seen as somebody in church instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead you. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads you to a church that you don't want to go to because he going to check you. He's going to check your stinky attitude. He's going to check your flesh. But guess what? You don't want to go there. You want to go to the church where it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Because here it is. As soon as somebody corrects you, the first thing which your demonic spirit does, it flares up. And now you want to attack the pastor. Oh, I know I'm preaching real good. I know you done turned it off about now. So go on for those that are fake. Go on, turn it off because I'm in your uh, neighborhood. I'm Mr. Rogers. I got my sweater on and I'm coming right up in. Here it is. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Let me tell you, the beautiful day in the neighborhood is this. You don't want nobody to check your demon. And as soon as you tell truth, the word of God, as soon as the word of God hits you, you got an attitude. Well, I never, I don't like the pastor. No, you don't like that demon in you don't like to get cast out. It want to keep playing in you because you like it. Let's say it like this. You let you like your pet demon. And you don't want nobody to talk about your pet demon. If you talk about, you offended me. No. Guess what? You offend the Holy Ghost coming up in church playing. You offend the Holy Ghost saying that ain't no good pastors. And God says, how is it that my church still been going on for over 2,000 years? And you're going to tell me ain't no good pastors? He says, I got pastors after my own heart. What it is is you don't know what God's heart is. So you go and get with hirelings, people that's there for money. Some pastors, they really are just pastoring just to get a check and to have an organization that's a nonprofit that ain't got to pay taxes. And you follow them. Because they'll let you go to the casino. You follow them because, well, they'll let us have a little wine. Well, you know, it's saying we're supposed to have a little wine for the stomach's sake. Well, yeah, Paul did say wine for, for the stomach's sake as a medicinal to deal with the infirmities that's in your body. He didn't tell you to drink the whole 40. God, no. You done drank the whole thing. And then now you want to sit back and say, well, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And then want to say, well, I'm singing in the choir on Sunday. I'm deacon and then guess what? I'm going to open up service in prayer. You smell like weed and alcohol. And then you want to sit back and yell at the young kids. Y'all ain't supposed to do this, but they looking at you. Where did they get it from? You have to be taught. So guess what? You teaching. Oh yeah, that's that spirit. Just there. It came back with seven worse than you. And guess what? When you are, uh, your state is worse than what the original was. You co-sign on it. I'm fine with it. Look what the text says. And the last state of that man is worse than the first state. I got eight spirits in me now instead of one. And guess what? Eight is the number of new beginnings. So guess what? You had a new beginning with all of your eight demons. You're worse than you've ever been before. You cuss more. You lie more. You cheat more. You drink more. You smoke more. You manipulate more. You don't come to church like you used to. I'm, I'm, Pastor, I'm going through some stuff. Well, guess what? Everybody go through stuff. But when you want to stay saved, you want God to keep you. You'll stay in front of God's face and say, God, keep me because I can't keep myself. Feel me. First of all, the big deal but this whole verse 24, 25, 26 is that you kept your house not filled. When a demonic spirit gets casted out, you need to have the house filled. In other words, you need somebody to occupy the house. Who should occupy the house? The Holy Spirit. You should allow the Holy Spirit to come in. I need to seek God. God, I know you don't want my house empty. You want my house filled. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Because when I look at Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, being filled with the Holy Spirit means I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And guess what? He'll fight off any demon that tries to come to the door saying, 
I got eight of my buddies. I guarantee you eight demons ain't going to beat one Holy Spirit. Ain't going to happen. He will kick them out and he'll say, as for me in my house, I'm over to this. And I've never lost a battle and I never will. So men and women of God, let's keep away from allowing the demonic spirit that has been delivered from us from coming back. No spirits returning because you can't claim this house. And that's why, because of that, we're overcomers. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony is, I once was like that, but guess what? I'm a new creature. And if God has made me a new creature, I'm not going to let no demon come back in and take me back to what I used to be. I decree and declare today your deliverance. I decree and declare your healing. And I decree and declare we're not going to let the demons from the past return. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Walk in your newness and stay tied to the Holy Spirit so he can fill you and your house will never be empty. In Jesus' name, amen.